Hello, welcome back. I'm with James Willoughby, the Senior Analyst for Graphite over at Wood Mackenzie. James, good to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you. Um, give us an update on pricing to begin with for Graphite at, say, 95% total Graphite content. Sure, yeah, it's been a, quite a difficult start to the year this year, um, sort of across all of the different flake sizes. I mean, we're looking at average pricing down sort of 10%. It's maybe even worse in some of the sort of finer flake sizes. So we're looking at minus 23% for fine flake delivered into China. Um, that's down at sort of $645 a ton, uh, down 13% for the medium flake at just above $1,000 a ton. The larger flakes holding up slightly better, but still down sort of 9%. Um, so pretty negative across the board. Um, the prices into Europe are holding up better um, because there's slightly more limited supply, um, but still we're looking at near double digit negatives across the board there as well. What, why do you think that is? Because obviously beginning of, I guess, even when you were looking at analysts forecasting last year, um, people weren't expecting the beginning of 2023 to be, I guess, as poor as it has been. What, what's been no. the cause of this? Yeah, so I think there's really three main causes. And the first, I think, applies to all of the battery metals, probably across the whole metal space. And that's really just the macroeconomic environment. Yeah. Um, so, you know, things are pretty poor because of general inflation around the world. Um, people buying fewer electric vehicles, you know, that's going to um, sort of hurt graphite demand. And then on top of that, we've had a buildup of stocks of graphite in China. Um, and while that is starting to ease, obviously there's still that build up of material there that we've got to get through before, you know, prices can, can really take off again. And then I think thirdly, you know, we're looking mostly at the natural graphite prices, but there is competition from synthetic graphite for those anode uh, end uses. Um, and really this year we've seen quite a lot of capacity for synthetic graphite come online um, and the demand really isn't there. So you're having those prices lowered um, and that's now competing a bit more with natural graphite. Is that something that you see as a short term issue or, or more long term? I think I'd probably put it in the medium term. So we are seeing a lot of capacity being installed and it will take a number of years for that to be filled. Um, but I think that there's so much potential for demand growth in graphite across the board, so natural and synthetic that really it's not so much a question of competition between the two. You know, both are going to grow um, pretty rapidly over the next decade or two. What Can you just um, give us a bit of a recap as the, the current size of the natural um, graphite market? And I guess geographically, has, has it changed much in terms of China's dominance? Yeah, so the, the natural graphite market this year is about 1.6 million tonnes. And that's grown pretty rapidly uh, over the last 10 years. Um, it crossed the 1 million tonne mark in 2018. Mm -hmm. And so even with the impact of COVID and everything, you know, we're still um, almost 50% or more than 50% higher um, now. Um, China is still the dominant producer and consumer, as it is in other battery metals. Yeah. Um, but it's now about 72% of the market, which is down from about 80% on average over the last decade. And that's really as we've seen production from Africa come online, start to move into that space and demand from EVs and the rest of the world really starting to take a foothold. How does that look in terms of, I guess the Western world progressing in terms of bringing on new graphite projects and even, even on the processing side, are we starting to see at least more of a pathway to less dominance within, within China and actually a bit more self-reliance on, on natural graphite in the Western world? Well, I think it depends exactly what part of the supply chain you're looking at. So if you're going all the way down to the mining level, I think the West, so call that the US and the EU, there's not too much supply coming online at that level. You know, there are a few mines, but really a lot of that new supply is going to come from Africa. Yeah. Um, as you start to go higher up the chain, those prospective producers in Africa are looking to put in spherical graphite plants in the US or in the EU to produce the precursor anode material to go directly into those EV end use markets. So there is a path to less dominance by China, um, 
but the scale of how that shifts really depends on on where you're looking okay um growth rates over the last couple of years have been around 40 percent year on year how sustainable do you think that is moving forward well i think you know you say 40 percent, but that's sort of comparing to covid impacted years rebounds big shifts in in uh, sort of the market dynamics but saying that we do still see um, a lot of growth potential in graphite and until the end of the decade we've got a compound annual growth rate of about nine percent um, so still extremely rapid um, that will slow as we start to get out towards 2050 um, but still there's um, a lot of potential in graphite to maybe double the market size by 2050. Has, has the EV market finally taken over in terms of um, being the majority of demand for natural graphite or is that something that you're expecting to happen soon? So in terms of the individual end uses, um, batteries are now the biggest use of natural graphite. Um, for synthetic graphite, they're second behind electrodes for still making. Um, and that's a big shift from maybe seven or eight years ago when they were third for natural graphite and sort of eighth, ninth for synthetic. Um, so it's definitely a, a, a big shift in recent years. Okay. And I guess one of the main forecasts that we've been seeing is that around 150 new mines are needed to come online by, say, 2035 for, for supply to catch up with demand by that point. Um, I mean, one, is, is that realistic, given that not many major companies seem interested in graphite? And two, do, do you agree with that figure? So I think there is definitely a need for new graphite mines in the market, but I think 150 new mines is, you know, slightly excessive. Yeah. Um, we see the graphite market more than doubling by 2050. That's adding about 1.8 million tonnes. Um, and the average graphite mine is about 80,000 tonnes. So if you kept all production from existing mines at sort of 2022 levels, you only need about 22 more mines. And that's, you know, excluding the fact that some of those producers are going to be increasing capacity at those mines and sort of excluding the fact that there's several mines coming online this year, next year, already in the pipeline. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I think 150 is a bit, you know, uh, overzealous. Okay. I mean, that to me, it sounds 22 more mines coming online until 2050. I mean, that sounds pretty achievable. Um, what would you consider that's a conservative target for you guys or what what sort of because it, it sounds like to me a lot of the a lot of analysts in the market are uh, especially last year were sort of calling for graphite's bull run and we're sort of running out everyone panic but I'm, I'm getting more of a calm tone from you yeah i think we're well i guess we would say we're a realistic forecast yeah. i think a lot of the analysts out there are predicting a lot more natural graphite being used in the anodes than perhaps we're seeing in the market right now. Um, so the anodes are generally a mix of natural and synthetic graphite, and they're majority synthetic at the moment because that has better properties in terms of the cycle life of batteries, and that's you know a key metric for people who want their cars to last longer, yep. um, which everyone does, of course. So, you know. At the moment, it's around 10% natural graphite in an anode. You know, we do see that maybe increasing, but I don't think we're ever going to get to the point where there's a majority of natural graphite in the anodes. And so our forecasts for natural graphite demand are, you know, obviously lower than other analysts who are predicting, you know, a, a big paradigm shift there. Do you think the current pricing at the moment for, especially for small and fines, which are usually the ones that go into the anode, do you think they're incentive enough at the moment for new mines to come online and ramp up production? What we've seen at the moment is quite a few mines in China, Mozambique, slowing or, or stopping production because of the lower prices. Um, but I think that a lot of the projects out there are advertising sort of C1 costs at you know, significantly lower um, prices than, than what we're seeing in the market. So on paper, they should be able to come into the market and, and operate fairly well. Um, and that's, you know, even before we consider sort of downstream value added products like spherical graphite, expandable graphite. Um, so there's, you know, plenty of optimism that we can see new supply. Um, 
but of course that's on paper you know things can change very rapidly and there's a lot of other things to consider um sort of past c1 costs but you know there's definitely room there for for new mines i wouldn't mind touching back on to the synthetic graphite mm -hmm. um again because obviously like you were saying everyone wants a car that's going to last a long time right um but for the anode manufacturers, obviously, it can be up to about three times more expensive. You've also got all the environmental issues with synthetic coming from, from oil products. Um, can, can, they, can they afford to, to remain as the major or the majority um, of, of the anode synthetic? So, I mean, one from a cost perspective, but second from an environmental perspective. Yeah, so the cost of synthetic has been sort of the major um, challenge with that material. Um, but this year, as I mentioned, we've seen a lot of that capacity come online. Prices have dropped considerably. Mm. And it's now at the point where it's almost at parity with some of the natural graphite products that we're seeing going into these anodes. Um, and already we're hearing of some substitution um, of the OEMs replacing that natural graphite in their anodes with synthetic because it does have those better properties for cycle life. Um, but as, as I mentioned earlier, I think that over the medium term, you know, we'll start to see synthetic graphite prices increasing again, natural graphite to remain quite competitive. Um, and so, you know, we will still have to, um, we will still see OEMs using natural graphite in, in their products to reduce those prices. Um, and as you mentioned, yes, the, the carbon footprint of synthetic graphite is quite a bit higher than natural graphite. Um, just comparing them in China, you know, there's a stark difference. And then when you start to look at the rest of the world where people are using quite a lot of renewable energy, installing solar plants, you know, using local hydropower, you know, that again drops quite dramatically. So I think OEMs, even if the price was to stay the same for natural and synthetic, um, they would still like to use natural just to reduce the carbon footprint of their anodes. Okay. What about substitution from silicon-based anodes? I feel like this is getting a lot of airtime at the moment. Um, how realistic is that? What, what sort of penetration do you see from silicon-based substitution? Yeah, so silicon's a really interesting, exciting material for anodes, um, but it does have one major challenge, which is its expansion rate when you charge it. It can be up to 300%. Oh. Um, so if you're having that in quite a constrained battery, you know, obviously that can lead to damage and, and degradation of the actual battery. Um, so what people are doing at the moment is adding sort of 5 to 10% silicon in the form of silicon uh, carbon uh, additives straight into the existing graphite anode. And so the, the limited expansion of the graphite helps to constrain the silicon. So you're getting some of the benefits from the silicon without the sort of negative aspects of that. And that's the market at the moment. Um, so it's not really a substitution, it's kind of a, a synergy between the two. What people are looking at now is developing new technologies that can use even more silicon. Um, things like nanowires, for example, where the actual shape of the silicon um, helps to stop that expansion in the battery. Um, and, you know, that can be quite a bit more silicon. Um, and of course, when we get to that stage, there will be some substitution. Um, but I think it's important to note that the impact of that silicon is significantly less than the growth we're going to see in graphite overall. So, you know, it's not as positive as it could be for graphite, but it's by no means going to see the graphite market, you know, growth rates halved or something like that. Okay, good. Um, what guidance can you give us, I guess, if any, in, in terms of how graphite could look from a price perspective over the next five years or so. Uh, one, of, one of the, a lot of graphs that I see is that we see this big demand supply disparity coming online around 2025. It to me suggests that prices should, should start to increase at some point. Um, would, what's, what's your view on, on the way it's going? Yeah. I mean, I think we agree that prices should increase, especially from where they are at the moment. Um, we're perhaps not as, bullish as, as some of those other forecasters out there who are predicting, you know, extremely large deficits. But definitely there's room for growth in particularly the sort of battery related products. So those fine and medium sized flakes and also the spherical graphite material for the anodes. Brilliant, James. Thanks for the update. Thanks, Peter.